Um, so they started rounding the troops, Dr. Pagoli, the surgeon, who I hadn't, hadn't actually met yet, and I hadn't toured the NICU at that point either. Um, I was due to actually do that that week. So um, I didn't know who this surgeon was that I heard so much about, but I knew I was about to meet him. Um, and I already had trust in him at that point, even though I hadn't met him, only because he was just so highly, I mean, everyone just spoke so highly of him. And at 5.20 that morning, they um, ended up taking Owen by C-section, which was planned anyway, but um, that was at the time they were able to kind of round everyone up. So 5.20 C-section, Owen was born and um, I was exhausted from being up all day and they took us back to the room and we just kind of rested and waited to hear news about what was going on. Um, Dr. Pagoli um, just let us know that he had placed a silo, that um, there was a huge amount of bowel out um, and that we could plan on seeing no one in the NICU. They were just um, you know, getting him situated and, and getting everything um, ready for us to come in. So a few hours later we did um, end up going over to the NICU and getting our first glimpse of Owen. Um, and it was something I, I just will never forget the feeling of A, being wheeled into the NICU, which is very, it's, it's something that I'd never seen before anyway. So there's a culture shock about even seeing the NICU in itself. But then to actually see Owen was, um, it was over, it, it, we were overcome. I was overcome by it. He wasn't awake. They had him on a lot of pain medication at that point. Um, so I didn't see his eyes and he obviously wasn't responsive, but he had a ventilator and all the monitors. And, um, you know, the most shocking part obviously was this big clear silo. Um, he, he had a, just a bit of cotton around the base of his belly. And then this, this big silo that kind of came up out of his belly and was suspended over him and um, it was packed full like to the top of this humongous plastic bag with bowel and it and he was so small and the bag was so large that I just thought to myself how is that ever gonna fit in there and I think that was the first time that I thought that it might have a different outcome than what we had forecast like what we had foreseen for ourselves and we knew that we had a long journey. Um, he had a few different surgeries, the silo placed, and then he also had um, five days after the silo was placed, they actually went in and placed a wound vac um, over that, actually when all the bowel was just able to kind of sink into the belly. And the surgeons were, Dr. Pagoli's team, every time they came in to move the bowel down every day a little bit, they were so impressed that this little tiny guy was taking all this bowel in. I think that they really felt like they couldn't explain it because Owen not only had a ton of bowel out, but it was also just matted, terribly matted. And um, it was an unusual gastroschisis case. We just put all of our trust into the doctors and um, just continued to pray uh, for healing for Owen. And we knew that we had so many people behind us and supporting us that kind of pushed us through. But it was um, so tiring toward the end. So just emotionally, physically, we were exhausted. We like slowly kind of started to feel like normal parents. You, you know, make, warming up the bottle in the NICU. It's just those little things that when we finally got to do them, it was just amazing. It made it even sweeter for us. And three months after we started, um, just a little over three months, 100 days exactly, we got to come home. He was on a feeding tube still. We were um, trained on how to insert the NG tube, um, which was intimidating at first, but at that point, we were willing to do anything, anything to take him home with us. And um, that's when we met, met with Dr. Gerardo um, a few months after Owen was home to talk about how are we going to get rid of the skin graft and finally close up his stomach um, for the long term. And they had decided on uh, putting tissue expanders in, which are basically like water balloons. Dr. Gerardo and his nurse Christine uh, showed us how to fill the tissue expanders because we were such a distance away that um, we learned to fill them and we had to put so much in every week until they got um, 
to a certain size, it like stretches the skin out so we could get enough of his natural skin to close up his stomach. Um, but at the end of three months, he had these just huge balloons on the side of him and he was hardly fitting in his car seat. We went for surgery in September. Dr. Gerardo uh, and Dr. Pagoli um, kind of teamed up for the surgery. So we felt very special to have two of the best doctors preserved for our son that day. Um, nervous, obviously, for surgery. Um, but they removed the tissue expanders, um, took out the skin graft that Dr. Lentz had placed, and then closed up the abdominal skin. And um, he was in the PICU for two or three days, and then we stayed um, on the fourth floor while he healed. Um, but I remember looking at the result after um, Dr. Gerardo had kind of stitched him up, and I had just chills because he had this huge, you know, scar, but it was beautiful. Like, it was the most beautiful, amazing. I was so happy with the results, and he's just like a, a normal toddler. Hey.